Now it's time for our next guest. Nina Duvaluri is an acclaimed host, speaker, advocate, and entrepreneur who first gained international recognition by becoming the first Indian American and South Asian to be crowned Miss America 2014. Today she joins us to talk about her skincare line, female empowerment, and everything in between. Please give a warm build brunch welcome for Nina Duvaluri. Hi, thanks so much for coming. I love, love you guys. Oh, thank I'm you guys all the time. Oh, oh, I'm so super excited to like yeah. just hang out and chit chat. So this is really fun for me. Wow, yeah. you. so nice yeah. of you. I mean, anytime you want to freestyle sing with us about male anatomy, yes. Yes. Any, you know okay. what I mean? Oh, my sister's a urologist. <laughs> yeah. 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 God, you would bring so much to the oh, table. She, I think she would, but I'll <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, Nina, we're so happy to have you here today and especially to talk about your new skincare line yeah. called Arani. So can you tell us about why you wanted to start this now? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, this has been um, kind of on the, a dream of mine uh, for a little while, but um, I think what's interesting is that I kind of, I won Miss America in 2014, and I, that was really the peak of when, I like to say, the influencer bubble mm -hmm. kind of yeah. started taking off, and um, it was a really interesting time for Instagram. And so for me, I recognized, you know, I was having kind of these brands reach out, and it felt very inauthentic to post a discount code mm -hmm. or you know, something about things that I wasn't using. And frankly, that's just wasn't the goal of mine was to, to do that. Um, and if I was going to do something, I remember from the beginning, I said, if I really want to do something, I want it to be something that I really believe in and mm -hmm. love and have put my heart and soul into. And this is, I think, being an entrepreneur and being a startup is the only way at this point in time in my life I can equate to having a child because yeah. I don't have children. But you hope, like, you put your heart and soul into it and you just hope that people love it as much as you do. And unless you really have that and believe in something, I just couldn't actively talk about it yeah. because I think that's what really makes or breaks a brand. Gotcha. So the name of Rani, uh, where does that come from and what is the inspiration? Am I saying it right? Yes, okay. you are. I love it. Um, so Rani in Hindi means queen. Mm -hmm. So there's a little play off of the Miss America. Love it. Um, mm -hmm. But more importantly, really honoring the queens in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, our mothers, our <laughs> sisters, our aunts, our friends, the women that inspire us to do better every mm -hmm. single day. And so that was really the impetus and our mission was built around female empowerment. And yeah. so integrating that into, into the brand. Yeah. I love that. And can you tell us how um, it's so important to you to, you speak a lot about self-love and like owning your true identity. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. Um, I think it was something I really struggled with, um, especially, you know, growing up as a South Asian, I was oftentimes the only Indian girl in my classes. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Oklahoma, predominantly mm -hmm. white, conservative town. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people, yeah, um, people would always ask me what tribe I was in, and I, I was like, I don't know. Wow. Um, so I was a little conflicted. I was like, wait, am I Indian or Native American? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they asked what the red dot means. Do you worship cows? Uh, your house smells like curry, which is kind of true to this day. Yeah. But um, I realized that so many of these remarks weren't necessarily meant to be malicious, but really simply due to the fact of ignorance. And so I think this self-love, there was just a point in time in middle school where everyone hates their lives. And we've all mm -hmm. been through there. Yep. Um, and I just remember so badly wishing that I was white. Mm -hmm. Like just so badly wanting to be blonde hair, blue eyed, and wanting to shed my skin. And I think um, recognizing that there is so much more, that we're so much more than that, and being able to um, have this representation for not only myself, but other South Asian young women to see this um, and embrace your identity um, and self-love is, is really what what this has been about. Wow. I love that. And what are some lessons that you've learned when you launched Avrani and that you could maybe like give advice to other women who are going, trying to be entrepreneurs? Oh my goodness. Uh, so many things. But I think, I think the biggest thing is that first and foremost, you have to believe in what you're doing at baseline, but also there's never the right time. I think in general, you always, I think as women, we're always uh, saying, okay, well maybe at this time, and you think once or twice about an idea, or three, four, uh, four, 50, 500 times, whereas mm -hmm. there's other people out there will just be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna do it. And mm -hmm. they don't even think twice about it. And right. so if you have an idea and you believe in it, go for it, because there will never be the right time. You just have to, you just have to do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in addition to your skincare <coughs> line, you're working on a documentary that challenges um, the global skin lightening industry. Yes. So tell us about that. Oh, I'm so excited about this because this is the first time I'm being able to announce this mm. project. Oh, yeah. So I'm oh, so yay. glad that it's with you guys. Thank you. Yes. 
Um, I'm so excited about this. Um, it's called Complexion. And um, one of the issues that I had dealt with um, is the skin lightening industry, which is a billion dollar global industry um, using toxic chemicals and bleaching creams to promote the lighter skin you are, the more beautiful you're considered. And that's a beauty standard that exists in America or in, in, in Asia, but also Everywhere. in Africa and many East Asian countries as well throughout the world. Um, I remember in third grade, I went to my dermatologist because I had a patch of eczema on my skin and he gave me a cream for it. And I said, do you have a cream that will make me lighter? Mm -hmm. um, the morning after I won Miss America, the headlines right. in the Indian newspapers was, is Miss America too dark mm -hmm. to be Miss India? And I said, well, first of all, I didn't want to be Miss India, right. but thank <laughs> you for that. Um, and so this, this, this perpetuating stereotype exists, and it translates to so, so, like socioeconomic status for women in terms of education and their jobs. Um, and it's just been a huge barrier. So I'm like, I'm just so excited to finally shed a light on this and be able to talk about this because we're so much more than that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm so moved by like your honesty and the stories you're sharing. Even right now, thank I find you. them, to, they're so touching. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and thank you for doing such important work. Uh, you also work to you know, help women be more empowered in the workplace. Um, so can you share some tips for, you know, women out there watching about how to, like, really achieve their all? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is to ask questions because our male counterparts never even think to ask a question if they have one. So mm -hmm. especially when I'm talking with younger girls or even people my own age, um, I'll say, you know, the next time you have a question, just go up and ask. Yeah. You're not stupid. Like, we all have questions, and it's going to only make you better in your field, in your career, because at the end of the day, all of us should continue to want to learn and grow, and the only way that we're ever going to be able to do that, no matter what we're doing, is to actively engage and ask those questions. Yeah, that's a good one. I remember when you were crowned in 2014. It was a really <laughs> big deal. You you were the you were the first. I still can't believe it happened. I know. It's, 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 it's very weird. It's incredible because you were the first Indian American woman to be crowned Miss America, and with that comes an unbelievable amount of, you know, prestige and this huge platform, but also responsibility. And I imagine being a woman of color the pressure is overwhelming. How do you both accept, <laughs> accept the platform and use it to promote your causes as well as deal with this pressure that white women, white people do not have to deal with? Yeah. Anymore? You know, I went in wanting to be the first, you mm -hmm. know, Indian American Miss America. And I remember I'd competed for Miss New York twice. Mm -hmm. And the first time I didn't win. And um, I'd went back to my judges and I said, you know, what can I do better? Do you have any feedback? And I got a mixed reaction. You know, some people said, you're too Indian. You know, be more American. Miss America is just not ready for someone like you. Change your talent. You know, I did a, I did a Bollywood dance and I'm a dancer and singer and I love it. And I thought, well, maybe I should just go back to singing if, mm -hmm. if I really want to win. And then finally, I said, you know what? I'm going to let go of all of this because if I'm going to win, it has to be in my way and in my terms. And at the end of the day, I will always say, no matter what type of success that you get, I think the pressure that you're alluding to is that no matter what, you have to be able to lay your head on your pillow at night right. and know that you have represented yourself to the best of who you are. Um, and that's what I try to lead by. Yeah. And I think that's what you, you know, kind of that gut instinct is what drives us. Right. And um, <laughs> since 20... <laughs> Since 2014, women have made headwaves. We have Senator Kamala Harris, who's an Indian American woman, a woman of color running for president. Have you seen a progression that women of color, Indian women, are being able to accept it more in, in the beauty industry, in politics, mm -hmm. entertainment? Absolutely, and I'm so excited because I've been kind of on this tour for five years now, kind of being in the speaker advocacy space. And I, you know, as I started off, I said, you know, I think our generation, myself included, mm -hmm. has some sort of apathy for what is going on in the world around us. And I'm so happy to say that five years ago, that statement is not true because I think we're finally a generation where, as millennials, we are becoming, we understand that our voices matter. We understand that a Facebook post or an Instagram post isn't enough. We are taking mm -hmm. action, um, and we see people actively running and being able to say, you know what, I can do this, and believing that they can do this. And it's it's happening now, so it's a really exciting time. So when can we announce your presidential campaign? Yeah. Oh, can I work yeah. on it? <laughs> Maybe in like 20 years. OK, like, call there's me. A lot of, there's other things I'll yeah. do in the meantime. Press secretary, I call yeah. press secretary. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nina, it's not every day that we have a Miss America here. And we, you know, we'll never get to be in the pageants ourselves. And so we wanted to kind of relive a moment today. Uh, we know the question portion is always a really important part of the pageant. So yeah. we're hoping that you'll ask each of us a question, and then you'll have to crown one of us, Miss <laughs> Build Brunch. This is so amazing. <gasps> I am so honored.
honored to do this. Um, okay. I cannot wait. Okay, so I am, I am ready with some questions okay. if you guys are ready. I'm ready. All right, so if you're gonna go first. Yes, music. <laughs> All right. Do you have any guilty pleasures that no one knows about that you do while you're at home? Um, thank you for your question. That was a really great question. Really important. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I when I'm home, I really just love to relax and, and do things that improve myself. And so my favorite thing in the world is to uh, make saltines with peanut butter and jelly, and then watch uh, Spanish language shows on Telemundo so I can improve my Spanish skills. Wow. Um, I think that's just really important to always be improving, even in my downtime. Uh, thank you. Wow. Thank you, contestant number one. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. I want to say really quick, I support all my other uh, fellow contestants, and okay. I'm just so happy to be here. I really don't care about winning. I'm just glad to be alive. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right, so if you had to pick another host to win the Miss Build Brunch, who would you choose and why? Well, I think you all know that I've been really loud about being all about gender equality. And I think it would be great to have for the very first time a male Miss Brunch. <laughs> wow. Yay! I think <laughs> Lucas's nipples are so prominent <laughs> And I think that, you know, sometimes people are like, free the nipple, but what if we make the male nipple a female nipple? And what if we just say, excuse my language, but we can curse, fuck the binary. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, contestant number three. What are your hidden talents? <laughs> and can you show us? Um, no. Thank you so much for that. Um, unfortunately, I don't think life is about having hidden talents. <laughs> I think if you have talents, it's your duty as Miss America, as a civilian, as Miss Brunch, to share those talents <laughs> to better the world. I'm not double jointed. There's nothing I hide. <laughs> but I do smoke weed sometimes. <laughs> and I hide that. <laughs> All right, all right. All right, and finally, contestant number four. If you had a genie and could make three wishes, what would those three wishes be? Thank you so much for that question. Um, I've actually thought about this a lot. Um, I've actually thought about First, I would ask for, I would ask to go back in time to 2015 and tell Hillary Clinton to not use a private email server. <laughs> that would solve a lot of problems. Second question, second wish. Um, I would love to stop climate change. I believe it's destroying the world. Yes. And the third wish, I would love to have unlimited cheesecake. <laughs> and I would share it with all my friends, all of you out there. Wow. Wow. Cheers. All right, so now you have to <laughs> Okay, well. So this was really tough because everyone was so great and qualified, and I know all of you would do such a wonderful job in this role. Oh my god. But there can only be one. And I think for me, the way to my heart is food. So and climate change. So look <laughs> at Out there, we're gonna <laughs> this is, of course, the white man. Yeah, of course, there's white man. Women here. Thank you so much. Well, Nina, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. And